Clayton Cubit or Covet. I don't know what, how to pronounce it. Where am I? In all? Okay, so this is quite interesting. If you haven't discovered about this person, it's worth going to hysterical literature. And what he did is he, had, he has all these women uh, reading from various books. I think she's reading from the Marquis de Sade or something. And underneath this table is someone with a vibrator who's basically getting them off. <laughs> and so they're trying to read and concentrate and tell it and read the story to you to the point where they can't read anymore. And, they, and this presupposes that you can make a woman have an orgasm with a vibrator under a table, which I think is a bit disingenuous because I think a lot of people would be like, stop it. What are you doing? Get off. Stop it. I'm reading. But really interesting stuff. Is it pornography? I mean, you know, images of women orgasming are usually considered to be, you know, pornographic. So this is, again, this is artists exploring, you know, what you can do with this stuff. I mean, is, is an orgasm a, 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 a pornographic thing, or is it just a, you know, a human expression, which isn't done in a graphic way? There's nothing graphic about this, but you know there's something very exciting going on. And I actually find this really erotic. Personally, I was like, oh yeah, that's a little bit erotic. But there's nothing. I mean, so this probably wouldn't fall foul of all kinds of censorship laws. But it's much more erotic than some of it. Okay, so this is um, just a modern version of this. Later in the swan. Uh, basically, she gets raped by a swan, uh, which seems unlikely. But is that Zeus in disguise or something? I think it might be, yeah. Yeah, your classical literature is better than mine. I only read the you know, first line on Google. Really? Really? Uh, was it really always a swan or did he come in no, different guises? No, it was always a swan. He just, you know, that was that particular time. Did she know that it was Zeus? Nah. Just a dirty old yeah. swan. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, fair enough. But if you don't know who made the image, then you can't tell. So basically what I'm saying is there is not any, there is no way to divide divide art and pornography. It's just not actually possible. It's just, you know, it's a construct. So here we have Robert Mapplethorpe. Now, you probably, if you're familiar with his stuff, and you know, you know, I'm so jealous. <laughs> I really like his suit. <laughs> Lovely suit. So, you know, deliberately pornographic imagery basically by you know an artist taking using photographs You've got to whip up his up his ass. I mean you can't there's no way you can say this isn't trying to be pornographic, provocative. But you know, what's it also trying to say? And it's, it was sort of playing with the uh, the fact that he could produce these images at the time. And it was in a Western democracy where you get all, just start to get away with this stuff. And so you know artists do like to push the boundaries and that's one of the boundaries that's they're always gonna push. There's always going to be room for movement as places get more and more acceptable. And this is, the idea is that this, if pornography objectifies people and there's a victim, some of the problems people have with pornography is not the images themselves, but the industry and how that affects people and, and how people become addicted to pornography. But there's also the question about how the images are made and the objectification of women and, and the fact that they, they basically become a, a tool in this in this game. But what happens when they then turn the camera on themselves, like Mapplethorpe now? So this is Miss Aniella, who just basically takes lots of pictures of herself naked. So it can't, she's not, can't really objectify herself. No one can accuse her of being exploited in this, in this stuff. So it's another question, like, you know, all I'm doing is giving you lots of questions and absolutely no answers. Because I discovered I really didn't have any answers. You know, they, they, so even, you know, and there's a, there's a big, Thing now where people make pornography you know, themselves. And so who's being exploited in all this? So where, where do we, how do we decide what's not okay anymore? And I think that's, that's quite difficult. Uh, again, Tom Weiselman made lots of, you know, quite naughty pictures. Uh, it's definitely trying to be erotic, but you know, this, this is high art values, and the art has high value. This is, again, I think this is Andy Warhol again, uh, or Andy Warhol for the first time. I'm lost now, I'm just rambling. Uh, stop me anytime. Uh, where are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Warhol. So, this is basically pornography. It's just an artist making pornography. So, da da da. And then uh, the Chapman Brothers. I didn't even know what to say about this. 
really, uh, if you're familiar with the Chapman brothers, right, this is fairly typical. And I think it's kind of sort of challenging all of us in a way. I find these images incredibly hilarious. And also there's a little bit disturbing about them, you know. And I think that if I hadn't grown up in London and been looking at, you know, contemporary art from when I was very little, and especially just parachuted this into the middle of Kuwait City, you could imagine the kind of reaction that we get. But I, we just, I think we're able to see it for what it is, which is kind of a pretty humorous um, piece of work. But, you know, it's got, it, it is disturbing, and a lot of it starts quite disturbing. It's probably disturbed the first time I saw it. So that's kind of, so I'm taking you on this little journey through the, the sort of, the, the blurred edges of art and pornography, and discovered in so doing it myself, or when I kind of started looking into it, that I couldn't really uh, discover what, where, where the edges were. So in, in the beginning I, asked, I said, you know, is my work obscene? And so uh, I thought, with, I'm going to show some of my work now, I kind of try and work out whether it is obscene or not. Uh, uh, although I'll try and do it without notes because I've lost my place. So, great wall of giant. Basically, what you can do, you can just say uh, obscene if you think it's obscene or not. Okay? So, uh, I think the thing is, we're so used to, I mean, how can, we don't live in a culture where we can easily find things obscene. I mean, you come, you come to an art gallery, so presumably you're not really shocked by this kind of stuff. So, this, is kind of, this was for a sex museum. This was a. Uh, intended just to be educational. This was the precursor to the Great Wall of Vagina, so that's kind of how it all started. Uh, people, I was asked to produce this piece, and um, so this is the same guy, uh, hard and soft, same penis, same uh, vulva, legs together, legs apart, breasts come in pairs, so they kind of work in, in the grid, and uh, I cast myself to go in here because I thought, well, there's one less penis I'm going to have to deal with because I don't really like the things. And uh, I did not enjoy making this. I mean, I, I, men coming to my workshop and wanking was not why I went to art school, but there was money in it, so I did it. Um, and it was pretty obscene. Uh, but the interesting thing is, you know, so I was able, for the first time in my life, to compare my own penis to. 17 other men. My only references before then had been pornography. And I was always a bit like, hmm, that's annoying. <laughs> but then I realized, actually, I was just pretty normal. You know, at 40 years old, I was like, fuck, say all that worry for nothing. I'm fucking ridiculous. Now, at the same time, the women were coming and looking at the cast of other women that I'd already cast. And they were saying, oh my god, I had no idea they looked so different. I was like, really? And they were like, um, I wish mine looked like that one. I'd be like, why do you want yours to look like that one? Why is that a good one? They're like, well, because it's really neat. It hasn't got any frilly bits or whatever. And I'd be like, and that's a good thing? You know, so I came to understand that women now seem to have just as much genital anxiety as men that seem to have always had. So I thought, you know, casting worked for me, maybe. I could do a casting thing which would work for women. It was too late for me. I was already 40 by the time I had my epiphany. So that's how, how that was the inception of the Great Wall of China. The Great Wall of China is just trying to be educational, but according to the Japanese, it's obscene. So this is actually all the same penises. I just recycled them. They're over there. Um, and this is just me taking the piss. This is called 4x4, four four, and it's really, well, it's 4x4, four four, but it's also just about men's egos, you know, and their cards. 4x4, four four, four wheel drive vehicle, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> So it's just me really using genitals to be funny. Because they are. <laughs> you know, we shouldn't take it all so seriously. This is the American flag made out of 350 casts of my bell end. <laughs> <laughs> so it's called Old Glory. <coughs> Old Glory is a nickname for the US flag. But, uh, so uh, what am I saying? You know, am I saying Americans are dickheads? I mean, that would be the obvious. Uh, answer, wouldn't it? Uh, but really, I don't know. I, I, I try to pretend I'm not by <laughs> coming up with a fanciful explanation. 
uh, where I talk about the fact that it's actually about all my sexual conquests while well, I was at art school in America, which is why it's actually called Old Glory. So it's kind of a, it's a bit of a joke, it's a pun, but it's being deliberately provocative and silly with genitals. Genitals are silly, look. So here's something called Amornite. And uh, what I've done is I've taken these, uh, these Ammonites, uh, I think another one. No, that's the shuttlecocks. We'll go back to the Ammonites. <laughs> and I've sculpted this quite nice little phallus little up to the end of it now and made it look painted to look. So I'm kind of being quite artistic and quite clever using all the special effects techniques that I've learned in the film business. And I was kind of the joke about this is is this Ammonite now worth more or less now that I fuck with it? Because they are expensive. You know, so I kind of like the idea that it's the artistic intervention, even though I'm being silly. I've actually, have I ruined the thing or not? And uh, Shuttle Cox, you see where we're going here. I'm just because I think this stuff's funny. The armadillo. <laughs> it is funny. None of this is obscene, but you know, according to Japanese, I'm, I'm obscene. All right. So, so this is where I've probably gone a bit too far, right? This is called the pussy cat uh, for obvious reasons, and uh, I actually think this is obscene. So I do think that they got a point. Uh, so basically, this human genitals, uh, female genitals, in the face of what turned out to be a male cat. <laughs> and the funny thing is that when I put the, the vagina in its face, I couldn't join its chin back together because it wasn't designed to have that in its face. <laughs> so, I had to so I took some fur off its balls and shoved it in its chin. So it's got this little kind of goatee here. And it's actually, actually ball hair. No, I think not. And actually, that was a female armadillo I discovered, so I kind of it's wrong on too many levels. Okay, so what's this? So this is basically a glass cast of the an inside of a vagina. Now, what is this? And what the fuck am I doing? I don't even know, as an artist, what I'm doing half the time. I was curious. I'm like, well, I've got the equipment, I can do this, you know, 